Chapter 31 As it turned out, Austin had saved me by remembering that Jimmy Joe Blanks spoke to him once at a rodeo, and in the course of conversation, mentioned that he liked to take girls to his ranch. Austin called Sheriff Venn. The sheriff knew where the ranch was, and the rest you know. Officially, Austin was released from the hospital two days before I was. He didn't leave my side and slept curled around me the same way I'd slept with him. We felt safe because a deputy was guarding Jimmy Joe Blanks, whose room was down the hall from mine. Jimmy Joe was being treated for, quote, a really wicked bite wound, sheriff's words. After that, he would be transported to the county jail. Rocky Hill and Gil Young had been released on bail, but Gil would have had to face the judge, who would kick his ass for attacking a handicapped man. I had quite a few visitors, including my parents. My mother insisted on checking my wound herself. She declared that it was healing nicely, but if Jimmy Joe hadn't a deputy guarding him, one or both of my parents would have made his life even more miserable. At one point, my mom caressed my hot face with her cool hands like she had when I was little, declared that I had fever, and went to give instructions to my doctor. In spite of visitors, I still had time to think about the murder and was sure I knew what had happened. I left the hospital walking gingerly, but I was going to be fine. There were stitches in my side, and I was full of antibiotics and pain pills. After I let Austin off at his house, I sat in my explorer and called Barney. You realize you're the hot topic, don't you? was the first thing he said. The sheriff had forbidden the deputies from talking about it. Good, then you shouldn't. A lot of the details have been in the Alpine paper. I groaned. Please don't tell me anything else. Are you all right, Ricos? I'll live, but I may not want to when the deputies get a hold of me. Anyway, let's don't talk about them. I want to talk to you about the murder. Well, if you insist. I'm sure Lil Munch paid Chapo Rodriguez to kill Norma. Digame, he said. Tell me. We know Chapo's been up to something. Lil knows that Norma lied to her and used her. After the lawsuit was over, she turned against Lil and told her it was her fault because, of course, Norma couldn't accept blame about anything. Right. Lil thought Norma was her friend, but Norma was incapable of real friendship. You know what the list says about sociopaths being charming, yet covertly hostile? Yes, I remember. It also says, and I quote, Instead of friends, they have victims and accomplices that end up as victims. Lil started out as a friend and became Norma's accomplice. But when things didn't go Norma's way and the case was mediated, Norma didn't need Lil and Lil became her victim. Makes sense so far. I'm thinking Lil didn't take that well. She was a how-dare-they type, the type that burns to get even. And she has a little man syndrome, even though she's a woman. We had a laugh about that. Then I pressed on. She was in Houston, and that took us off her scent at first. Her alibi seems airtight, and it is. She stayed with her cousin and paid pathetic, stupid Chapo to do her dirty work. Then, because she knew Mom was sure to come under suspicion, she decided to set her up with falsely planted evidence. I see where you're going, Ricos. Setting up Mom is Lil's style, and it wouldn't be the first time. She watched Norma do it before and was her willing accomplice. So Lil had motive, he said. She's the only suspect we know who makes sense, and Chapo has been bragging that he killed an old gringa. We've only got the one dead gringa. You always, you have something here. Lil has money so she could buy a hit, and like my mom said, she lacks heart, and she and Norma had already spoken to someone about killing my mother, so all Lil did was turn the tables. I'm sure she thinks she's clever. It's so cold. They were the coldest ever. Norma was like a deep freeze. Lil was deep freeze junior. How are we going to get rid of them? I think you should go see Lil and put some pressure on her, I said. Make her admit it, then... Whoa there, John Wayne. I think you're getting ahead of yourself. How will I make her admit anything? Let me finish. I was going to say that while you do that, I'll talk to Chapo and tell him Lil gave him up. He'll either crumble or be forced to tell me what he's really up to. You can tell Lil that Chapo is talking. She's easy to read and she'll freak. Barney drummed a pencil against the desk. 
I think your plan is good, but I should talk to Chapo, and you should talk to Lil. For one thing, you've already, you're already up there. For another, she's afraid of you. She knows I hate her guts. You just don't want to see her again. That's true. You'd rather hang out with Chapo? Okay, I get your point. I suppose I'd choose Lil. What a crappy choice. No kidding. It's like choosing between shit and vomit. I laughed, even though it hurt. Should we do it at the same time, he asked. No, let me talk to Lil first, because if she admits to it, then you can go arrest Chapo, and you won't be in so much danger. How you figure? I don't know. I guess it's dangerous no matter how it goes. I was thinking you could slam him over the head with a beer bottle when he's drunk, cuff him when he's out cold, and drag him in. Oh, sure. Sheriff Ben will love that approach. Let's do it today. Are you sure you feel up to it? How are you, really? I feel as up to it as I'll ever be. My side hurts like fire, but working will keep my mind off it. I want to get this murder off our plate. Me too, Ricos. I have to say, it'd make me happy to see Lil's smug ass go to prison. You forgot former Deputy Blanks. Poor old shoots. Don't start. It's really not that funny. He's a sick man. I know it, Ricos. I don't know how you're keeping it together. My husband is dead. My father really isn't my father. My mother lied to me about my birth and lied to the sheriff about being blackmailed. I've been stabbed in the side by a raving maniac who made shrines to a woman he never knew. My best friend, the kindest man in the world, was viciously beaten. What else is going to happen, Barney? What the fuck else? I don't know, but when you use the F word, well, I've never heard you use it. I won't it won't do anybody any good if you go off the deep end. We don't want to be you be inflicted, too. He had me laugh, and that seemed to dispel the dark cloud hanging over my head. I guess you're going to see Lil today, he said, because you're such an overachieving superhero type. I just need a mask and a cape, Batman. No, you don't. Austin thinks the superpowers are in the uniform, but lately it's failing me. The superpowers are in you, Rico's. Wake up and smell the bat cave, bat girl. I laughed at that, even though the moment movement pained me. If we solve the murder, Barney said, do you think people will treat us with more respect? I doubt it. Nobody cares much about Norma's death, and nobody in Terlingua trusts law enforcement. If we come down on them, we're marcho, macho hard asses, and if we don't, we're a couple of stupid pussies. He laughed. Well, it might at least shut a few people up. I'm all for that, and it'll impress the sheriff. Ricos, the sheriff thinks you hung the moon. He does not. Does too. Well, anyway, good luck, he said. Call me the minute you can. I was in no mood to face Lil. I needed to run a few miles just to calm myself, but any movement pained me too much. I thought a frosty long neck would be good instead, but no, long necks paled next to running. Besides, running made me feel alive. Drinking made me wish I was dead. There wasn't even a contest. I took a deep breath and flung off my seatbelt, dreading what I had to do. Lil threw open the front door, and when I was about halfway up the path to her house, she stopped in mid-motion, staring in disbelief. Good morning, Lil. You're just hassling me because you don't know what else to do. She looked like she was going to start stomping her foot like a two-year-old. Then she said, Come on in, with civility. Go figure. I followed her inside, slowly, holding my side, and we sat. What happened to you, anyway, she wondered. I was stabbed, working a case. She smirked. I guess your work is more dangerous than I would have thought. It was horrible being with her again. I just have a few questions for you, I said in my solemn law enforcement voice. It's good to wear a professional uniform and look serious and spiffy when you have to keep a straight face and do unpleasant work. I'm sure I don't have anything to add to what I've already said a hundred times. Lil, I'm finding it hard to believe you don't know Chapo Rodriguez. I was trying to share, stare her down. I believe you do know him. Well, you're mistaken. I don't. I think you paid him to kill Norma. Lil stared at me with her mouth open. She started twice to speak. Finally, she said, What the hell? You've lost your mind. So much for the direct surprise attack. What had I, what had I expected? To see guilt on her face? For Lil to cut and run? For her to pour out her heart about the wicked things she'd done? She was staring at me, probably expecting me to say something. I wanted to cut and run. 
You're going to sit there and tell me that isn't true, I asked. Of course she was. And I couldn't see one drop of guilt or anything else on her face. You want so badly for it to be me that now you're making shit up. Does the sheriff know what you're doing? The sheriff expects me to find the murderer. Well, I'm not it. She began compulsively smoothing her cotton slacks, running her hands down her thighs to just past her knees over and over. There had to be something to that. But maybe she was only crazy, not guilty of murder. Why can't we just admit we're enemies and you go your way and I'll go mine, she said, still smoothing her pants. I took a deep breath. Chapo told me he was the one you and Norma spoke with about killing my mom. You're lying. I was following a hunch. No, Lil. He'd also been telling people he got a new truck because he killed someone for money. Lil stood and began checking the books and magazines on the coffee table, even though they looked perfectly aligned to my eye. If someone paid Chapo to kill Norma, it must have been Stanner. She was busy and not looking at me. Why do you say that? Well, who else would it be if it wasn't your mother? He had plenty of reasons to get rid of her. What reasons? Maybe he wanted Norma out of the way so he could be with his girlfriend. I imagine Norma was hard to live with. I think your mother is most likely, though. I wouldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it when they put her in jail and then let her go. There wasn't enough evidence to keep her. Lil turned to me incredulous. A bloody knife and shirt found on her property wasn't enough? What kind of shoddy crap is it that you people call investigating? The bloody shirt had never been mentioned in the news of the arrest and Mom's subsequent release. There was no way Lil could know about it unless she had something to do with placing it there. Finally, I was getting somewhere. It appeared the evidence had been placed by someone wanting to implicate Mom. Some things about it were wrong. It was a weak attempt by an amateur. A look of fury passed over Lil's face. Your mother hated Norma. She seems obvious as her killer. Yes, you've said that already, and frankly, Lil, she hates you too. What would she murder? Only one of you? I stared at her with open dislike, the way you look at dog poop you just tracked on a new white carpet. My side throbbed and my gut screamed to get away from there. Lil sat back, came back, sat, and was smoothing her pants again. Suddenly she sighed. All of the people I trusted let me down. How so? Stephanie let me down by stealing. I don't care what receipts she produced. I know she was stealing. And Norma blamed everything on me, and it wasn't my fault. She told me we'd get control of the organization, that Steph would step down, that she'd be shamed into it. She said the other board members didn't know anything or care about financial things. She didn't think they would back up Stephanie. She was wrong about everything, and then she blamed me. She looked at me and clasped her hands together. Really, I have things to do, and I've already been interviewed three or four times. I have a busy day today. Lil, did you plant the evidence at my mother's house? She slowly flushed scarlet. I thought she was going to go for my wound any time. My God, you just won't give up, will you? Of course I didn't do any such thing. I wouldn't go near that woman's house. You had someone plant it for you. No, I had nothing to do with that. Then how can you know there was a shirt? The detail wasn't made public. I could see I'd shocked her. I guess I heard it somewhere, she finally said. You had it put there, I said, pressing my luck. She turned to face me. I want you to get out of my house right now. I'll leave, but this isn't over. Don't you ever come back here, she growled. Get out! I stood. I'm leaving, but Chapo is talking, Lil, so it's just a matter of time. I headed back to my explorer. She was ranting about reporting me to the sheriff. Fine. If I came back, she said, she would shoot me. Go for it. We were close to solving Norma's murder. We just had to work out the details. I called Barney. I shouldn't have done it today, I said. I'm not thinking clearly. I barely got any sleep last night, and I have a lot of things on my mind. I don't think the way you did it matters. The point is, you stirred things up. She just didn't react the way I thought she would. She's in deep, Ricos. That's the point. We agreed that Lil had either murdered Norma, paid to have it done, or knew something she didn't want to share. I'm going to look for Chapo, Barney said. Be careful, Barney. Don't forget, he's most likely a killer. I would assume the man has killed someone, even if it wasn't Norma. Yeah, well, don't forget it. I hung up and sat there picturing Cimarron Mountain standing alone in the hot morning sun. 
along to be running towards it.